If you're watching this video, you probably have seen the amazing MOVA globes, which are globes of the Earth and other planets, which apparently spin in the air while supported on, on glass rods with no visible, you can't see how they're driven. And also it appears you can, you can touch the side of them and they still rotate, which is the weird thing about them. So how do they do it? Now MOVA globes, although they're very elegant, they're very expensive as well. And they range from 5 inch, 150, 6 inch, 300, and for the really large one, the 8 inch, can be more than 500 pounds. So this video is going to show how I've made an alternative MOVA globe equivalent. Now to do this, it stands on a perspex base which has got three holes drilled in it and it accommodates some chemistry stirring rods which you may remember from when your days at school so these are 10 centimeters long and they're angled such that they form a triangle and on this triangle apparently there is sitting a six inch globe rotating well it is an illusion and actually what you're seeing is an outer acrylic shell and then about one centimeter within that there is there is indeed a globe of the earth but it's suspended in liquid between the outer shell and the globe itself there's about a one centimeter gap now to stop it from stop the globe inside from touching the sides it has to be have the buoyancy which is just slightly lighter than water and there, there are two fluids inside the outer shell the bottom fluid is water, so the globe floats in that. But above it, and you can probably just see there is a, there's a line where some different mixture has been used at the top. And that has a density that's less than one. In fact, it's light paraffin oil. It's called lamp oil. So you can buy it from a hardware store. And it doesn't mix with water. So this globe is perfectly balanced to float between the top and the bottom surfaces of that outermost shell. So how does it rotate? Inside there are an array of solar panels and they are absorbing the light, in this case it's been lit up by a 9 watt LED bulb shining on the globe and enough light penetrates the globe to produce a voltage and a current and there's a very small motor inside, only draws one milliamp at one volt. And the shaft of this motor is vertical. And on this vertical shaft, there is a permanent magnet. Now, the magnet will try to align itself with the magnetic poles of the Earth. So it will align itself north-south and, in effect, it will be stationary. Now the body of the motor is connected to the globe itself, so if you hold the shaft still, the globe's got no alternative but to rotate about the shaft. And that's what causes this, well I suppose you'd call it anti-clockwise motion. If you viewed it from the top you'd say it's anti-clockwise, which is how the earth turns. So effectively the motor is coupling against the earth's magnetic force and rotating. If it gets enough light, it will continue doing this steadily. And that's the end of this first section. Here we have the 5 inch model, much smaller. It's got the same stand, perspex with the three glass rods. Now these are not by any means perfect. Because the, the outer shell is made from two hemispheres, Unfortunately, there's a join where the glue that adheres the two hemispheres together is visible. Also, on this one, you can see there's a, a black stopper, although I could paint that white. And that was the means by which I filled the outer crystal globe with liquids. So this one, I actually um, purchased a motor which was advertised as being for a toy car. Here we have an example. This is the motor that's sitting inside. I cut
cut the shafts down, mount it in the middle somewhere, and then on one of the shafts I put a small magnet. Now the solar cells, again I just bought some 2 volt cells which you can easily purchase and mounted these inside the top hemisphere. So they power the motor and the motor has a, a bar magnet on it made of neodymium magnets and that's it really so it's sealed up. Oh of course we, to get the buoyancy right I've used lead shot as you get in shotgun cartridges. These are tiny little one centimeter, not one centimeter, a couple of millimeters diameter lead balls. Now they are to get the buoyancy correct so that it, this globe floats on water up to this level but would sink in light paraffin wax which is from there to the top. The other thing about being lead shot is this thing has to be balanced with its mass so the center of gravity acts straight through the middle vertically. Now when you put this in to this whole thing together inevitably the globe is off center but by gently shaking it you can encourage the lead shot to move around in the bottom until you get the axis vertical and then it, it spins quite nicely. So that'll do for the second section. This small globe, the 5 inch one, has less solar panels than the 6 inch one and so it collects less light. Also the motor that I've used is less efficient. So here again, is the, this is the motor with the shaft cut down. And then onto the shaft I would mount a fixed magnet, so this is made from neodymium disc magnets and then put in a plastic tube and mount it so it rotates on the shaft. Obviously you'd have to orientate the motor so that the earth turns in the correct direction. Now the globe I've used for these smaller ones is just a, a child's toy or just a plastic globe that's mounted in a small swivel. Uh, it, I've split it into half and taken out any plastic parts inside that might cause me a problem. So this was the bottom half and you can see on this earlier model where the lead shot was placed. So this lead shot is extremely dense. Its density is 11.5 so you don't need too much of it to weigh down the globe to achieve neutral buoyancy in water. It's very heavy. And also because they're made of spheres once it is all assembled a small agitation can cause it to redistribute its mass so that you get the thing perfectly balanced. So having made the globe, put the motor in it, the lead in it, the solar panels, got the correct weight, you've got to glue it together with something. Now I, I had a lot of uh, failures until I found that this one, Technicoli or Technicol, it was the best one for the plastic. So I just put a, a layer of this glue around the edge of the hemispheres and clamped them together. Then the next thing is, here we've got the acrylic plastic outer shells. Now these are described on eBay as being Christmas baubles. Very big baubles. So they're two part baubles, you're meant to put little gifts in them and hang them off your Christmas tree. But this is the best thing I could find for the outer shell. So this would, obviously the complete globe would sit inside there and then you've got to drill a hole or two into the outside of this, cut the lugs off and assemble them like, like so. And for this, to glue these two together, I found that uh, a tube of Yoohoo glue, one pound at Poundland, was good for the job. But you did have to let it to set for at least 24 hours. After that, you can fill it with water and the light paraffin oil, the lamp oil, and hopefully you end up one like this that rotates. It does need a lot more light, this one, so I've actually got three 28 watt halogen lamps. It will probably work with two, but once it's set up it, it turns quite nicely. So the last of all is what about the really big one? And that's the one that costs over £500. 
By the way, this this small one is probably could do it for 30. The next one up for 40, and the really large one maybe 50 pounds in materials, glues, etc. And we'll have a look at that next. And here's the largest one, eight inches. It's a 20 centimeter outside acrylic clear crystal shell weighs about six and a half pounds but it still manages to be supported by the same perspex base and 10 centimeter glass rods although this is illuminated at the moment with uh, three bright lights it will actually run on two nine watt leds and it has imperfections it's still possible to see the the level between the two liquids and unless it's set up just right it may, it may even start to rotate in the opposite direction but this is a question of balancing up the amount of light input it's, the motor inside this one is capable of running clockwise or anti-clockwise it just depends on how it starts up so if it does start the wrong way, all I have to do is cut the light source completely, turn it on again, and there's 50-50 chance it will start in the correct direction. The seam is visible, so obviously it's not a perfect Mova globe, but this will set you back about 50, no more 50 pounds in materials, a lot of cursing along the way, but I think it does a pretty good DIY job. So there are my three Mova Globes. If you are interested in this, please send me some feedback. If, I, if you want to build your own, obviously there's a lot more technical details I can give and problems I ran into and how to solve them. But uh, I'll only produce that if, it's, if I get a sufficient feedback. Thank you. Bye. Here we see a Mova Globe. Um, I put it in a window. Uh, it's got one 9 watt LED spot lamp. But if the sun comes out, it won't need any artificial help at all. That's it.